In December 2022, Russian forces launched their latest offensive against Avdivka, culminating in the absolute disastrous battle for them in March. The Ukrainian defense is holding, and Russians had to settle with two tiny villages for which they sacrificed dozens of tanks, IFVs, and thousands of men. The tactical situation is completely unchanged, except for exhausted Russian forces. On May 13th, parts of that Russian forces, 10th Tank Regiment, have been forced to redeploy their surviving forces to Odradivka, south of Bakhmut, in order to stop the Ukrainian advance. The moment they have taken position at Odradivka, they have been targeted by Ukrainian drones and artillery, killing the newly appointed commander and several more. Elements of the 10th Tank Regiment, part of the newly formed 3rd Russian Army Corps, arrived around 13th of May in the area of the town of Odradivka. They had previously been deployed near Avdiivka, where they were involved in a multiple failed frontal assaults, in which they suffered serious losses, including most of their tanks and IFVs. They had been regrouping near the town of Lysikansk and seems to have been replenished with new Mobik recruits from all over Russia, but mostly recruits from Buryatia. Their arrival in the area south of Bakhmut is likely an attempt to stop Ukrainian advances in this area. The unit took up positions along the T-0513 road between Odradivka and Optin. Almost immediately after their arrival, shelling and drone attacks by Ukrainian forces took their toll. Several men were killed and more than 10 were injured. Among them was the newly appointed commander who eventually died of his wounds. Till yesterday there was no replacement. Due to the mostly ill-equipped Mobniks in this regiment, it is highly unlikely they could withstand an attack by organized Ukrainian forces which are currently advancing in this direction from Klishchivka, meaning that a large area west of the T-0513 from Zaitseva to Kodema can be liberated if defenses here are breached. Ukrainian forces are moving slowly as not to overstretch their lines on both sides of Bakhmut, so next week's will be crucial to the fate of Russian and Wagner forces inside the city. If Ukraine can move beyond the T-0513, things are starting to look grim for these forces. Portion of captured Russian soldier from the outskirts of Bakhmut. Prigozhin made another public address to Shoigu and Gerasimov, blaming the Russian army for withdrawing north of Bakhmut and uncovering the flanks. He begs them not to abandon flanks, complaining that his letters received no reaction. The plot thickens. Подразделения МОРФ отошли до 570 метров на севере от Бахмута, оголяя наши фланги. Я обращаюсь к высшему руководству Министерства обороны публично, потому что письма мои не читают. У меня просьба к вам, Валерий Васильевич, Сергей Кожугетович, пожалуйста, Не отдавайте фланги, не отдавайте населенный пункт Сака и Ванцетти. Еще несколько дней упритесь, как можете. Сделайте все, что от вас зависящее, чтобы фланги не сыпались. Ukrainian M777 howitzer of the 406th Separate Artillery Brigade destroyed Russian 152-millimeter towed gun Hyacinth B, presumably in the Kherson region. In Bakhmut, Russian soldier decided to shoot at the Ukrainian Mavic in vain. Then the younger brother called the older one. The infantry of the 30th separate mechanized brigade, supported by a tank, assaulted the invaders.
This is how Ukrainian drones destroyed a Russian tank in the Donetsk direction. This is how evacuation is done by the Ukrainian 3rd Assault Brigade in Bakhmut. Ми з моїм побратимом і ще чоловік туди ще вже забрали на Іваки. Воно їхав, нам дали другого чоловіка. Ми з дому, в якому знаходились, немножко смістили справа і пішли, попросили сусідню позицію прикрити нас з РПГ. Вони зробили пару вистрілів, і ми почали заходити в дом. Получилось так, що стояв дом і якась будка, і між ними був простріл. Ми підійшли до дому, я зрозумів, що весь дом заложений кирпичами, тобто всі вікна і взагалі нету дири. Я спочатку дивився, ну, і потім вже мій побрат йому бачив дирку, в яку я хотів закинути гранату. Між цими сраєм і домом він отримав 5 пулів. Я сказав, що у нас 300, попросив допомогу. Побратимы с позиции подбежали ко мне и начали эвакуацию. Я срезал с него бронежилет и мы начали его эвакуировать моментально. Когда эвакуировали, нас еще обработал пулемет очень плотно. Один побратым погиб. Но этого человека я вытащил. Я наложил ему два турникета, две плезини на липки, замотал ему шею, голову. И он в данный момент ну, в хорошем состоянии. Он разговаривает, и все отлично, он восстанавливается. Я их поздравлю, сука, еще нахуй. Иди сюда. Иди сюда. Иди сюда. Иди сюда. Не проживайте. Мичай! Мичай! Да, телек, конечно, ебнутый нахуй. ПС-очку поиграть на таком, да? Ебан. Позор, блин, утром нахуй. Вкус. Панорамная. Панорамный вид, ебать. Все, съеб. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Rescues. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.